Hello, my name is Izan Kramer and today I will be telling you a little bit about how nicotine affects the nervous, uh, the nervous system and different neurotransmitters that are in your body. So nicotine, um, cigarettes on average contain around 10 milligrams of nicotine and when smoke is inhaled it is absorbed into the bloodstream. Introduced to Europe around 1528, it was only in the last decades that people started fighting tobacco usage. Nicotine is a member of a family of compounds in which caffeine can also be found. Now today I will be going through a number of different questions um, about nicotine and how it affects the central nervous system in your body. So the first question I'll be answering is how does the drug affect the nervous system? Then second question, which neurotransmitters are affected and how are they similar chemically to the drug? Third question, how does the drug affect or change the neurotransmission at the synapse? Fourth question, does the drag, drug act as a stimulant or a depressant or both? Fifth question, if the drug is addictive, which nicotine is, how is it addictive? Then um, what are the symptoms of withdrawal on the body and mind of a user? And then I added three of my own questions. The first one being, um, what are some other components that are found in, nicotine, uh, in cigarettes um, apart from nicotine? Then e-cigarettes, do they still have the same effect as a traditional um, cigarette or not? And then lastly, how does inhaling and chewing tobacco actually differ? So, how does the drug actually affect the nervous system? Repeated nicotine stimulation increases the amount of dopamine released into the central nervous system. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter which, amongst other things, affects your sensations of pleasure. So when nicotine is um, inhaled and stimulates your body, this affects the brain pathways associated with reward and pleasure, resulting in addiction. Um, nicotine acts on the central and peripheral, peripheral nervous system, and its rapid effects include increases in blood pressure and heart rate, faster respiration, constriction of arteries, and stimulation of the central nervous system. Once within the bloodstream, nicotine circulates the body until it reaches the brain. This takes as little as seven seconds. It reaches the central nervous system in three to five minutes. Nicotine increases heart rate by about 10 to 20 beats per minute, as well as blood pressure by five to 10 millimeters of mercury, MMHG for short. Second question, which neurotransmitters are affected and how are they similar chemically to the drug? Once the nicotine is in the brain, it activates receptors called cholinergic receptors. These can also be um, found in areas of the body like the muscles or the heart. Normally, these receptors are activated when they bind to a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is produced at nerve endings in the brain and in the neuron of the peripheral nervous system. Nicotine has a similar structure to acetylcholine, explaining why it can activate the cholinergic receptors. And you can see two um, little diagrams showing the structure of nicotine and the structure of acetylcholine here on the left of the poster. Nicotine also stimulates the release of neurotransmitters such as dopamine, vasopressorine, epinephrine, beta-endorphin, or norepinephrine. This means positive sensation is increased while pain and anxiety is decreased. Third question, how does the drug affect or change the neurotransmission at the synapse? Nicotine binds to receptors on the presynaptic neuron. The drug excites the dopamine-containing neurons in the so-called ventral tegmental area, VTA for short. This means this area produces more action potentials. The more action potentials are produced, the larger the amount of dopamine released into the synapse. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that helps control the brain's reward and pleasure areas, which is why we feel more relaxed and happy when we consume tobacco. Nicotine acts as the cell body in the ventral tegmental area to increase the number of vesicles and action potentials to be released from a neuron, but it also does something else. Here, in this diagram that can be seen in the center of the poster, you can see a nicotine receptor towards the top left. When nicotine binds to it, here on the axon terminal that contains dopamine, so the axon terminal on the left side of the um, diagram, the amount of dopamine released with each action potential increases. Um, so not only the amount of action potentials released increases, but also the amount of dopamine that's released with each of them. So that definitely um, results in a large increase of dopamine release. Fourth question. Does a drug, drug 
act as a stimulant or a depressant or both. A stimulant is a substance that raises levels of psychological or nervous activity in the body. After one is exposed to nicotine, there is a rush of adrenaline which stimulates the body and causes a release of glucose and an increase in heart rate, heart rate sorry, respiration and blood pressure. Some other stimulants are caffeine, MDMA, cocaine or methamphetamine. Fifth question. If the drug is addictive, how is it addictive? Nicotine has a similar structure to the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation. This means it can activate the cholinergic receptors. The difference is that nicotine doesn't actually carry out the same function as acetylcholine, meaning it disrupts the normal function. Once nicotine is used regularly, the number of cholinergic receptors and the sensitivity of these receptors is changed, and this leads to nicotine tolerance. To keep the brain functioning normally, a smoker then needs to keep a regular supply of nicotine, meaning consuming it becomes addictive. The release of dopamine, which also occurs at much, much higher levels in drugs like cocaine or heroin, is also thought to be a main reason that nicotine is so addictive. Sixth question. What are the symptoms of withdrawal on the body and mind of a user? There are many... Um, withdrawal symptoms, um, a few of these in the body for instance being tingling in hands and feet, sweating, nausea, intestinal cramping, headaches, coughing, sore throat and weight gain. On the more mental, mental side of things, um, you get cravings, insomnia so you can't sleep, anxiety, irritability, finding it difficult to concentrate, depression and fatigue. Nicotine withdrawal symptoms can occur as soon as 30 minutes after the last tobacco use. Of course, this all depends on how addicted one is. When properly quitting tobacco, withdrawal symptoms tend to reach their peak after two or three days and go away completely after about two weeks. Now, to a few of my own questions. What other components apart from nicotine are found in cigarettes and how do they affect the body? While nicotine is the addictive part of a cigarette, there are many other components to a cigarette. I won't talk about all of them now because we don't really have time for that, but I'll tell you a little bit about three of them, aromatic amines, benzene and formaldehyde and acetaldehyde. So aromatic amines um, are a group of compounds used in the synth synthesis of pesticides, plastics and pharmaceuticals. Exposure to aromatic amines explains up to 25% of bladder cancer in certain Western countries. So you can see that this is really a um, main cause of bladder cancer. Benzene, you can see a little diagram here on the left of the bent structure of benzene, is actually formed naturally as a result of, for instance, forest fires or volcanic eruptions. Still, up to 50% of exposure to it in the US is shown to be due to cigarettes. So even though it's formed naturally, most of the exposure to benzene comes from smoking cigarettes. It's a proven carcinogen, which means cancer-causing, and is shown to cause anemia anema by causing changes to the bone marrow where new blood cells are made. And then last we, lastly we have formaldehyde and acetaldehyde. Both of these aldehydes are known carcinogens, um, acetaldehyde being the most present in cigarettes these days. It dissolves into saliva when smoking and together with formaldehyde causes irritation of the skin, eyes, mucous membrane, respirati respiratory tract and throat. Another one of my own questions, number eight, e-cigarettes, do they still have the same effect as a traditional cigarette and how are they different? Um, it was quite hard to find information on this since e-cigarettes are re uh, a relatively new invention, but I thought it would be quite interesting to learn a bit about them because uh, recently they're becoming a lot more trendy. Um, the amount of nicotine can actually be selected for e-cigarettes. Um, between one and 18 milligrams can be selected and they don't emit the same chemicals which are found in tobacco smoke. They use water vapour and are thus um, a little bit less harmful. Whether they are really harm-free is very uncertain because vapour and its contents differ from brand to brand. They have been found to reduce lung function, increase inflammation, and they do still co uh, contain cancer-causing compounds, though not as many as your average normal cigarette. Because they are a relatively new invention, not much is known about the ingredients and health risks of e-cigarettes. 
either way, the addiction is to nicotine is still present. And although nicotine itself doesn't actually harm you, I personally don't think it's good to be very dependent on an artificial substance. And to my last question, how does inhaling and chewing tobacco differ? Chewing tobacco is preferred by some people for experiencing its natural taste and also because it doesn't involve um, actually bringing smoke into your lungs. Nicotine is absorbed more um, slowly from smokeless tobacco, but the peak blood levels are um, roughly the same as uh, when you inhale tobacco. More nicotine is absorbed when chewing tobacco, on average 4 to 5 milligrams, while in smoking only about 1 milligram of tobacco is absorbed. So that was the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. I hope you found it interesting because I definitely did find it very interesting to see how this quite popular drug that many people use daily in their life affects the neurotransmitter and the different axon terminals in your body. And it was also very interesting looking at some of the withdrawal uh, symptoms and also having a chance to um, ask my own questions about nicotine. So thank you very much.